I've been saying for a while that I was going to get my engine hoist out of my utility shed, drag it into the garage, put a strap around the mill head, and swing the mill into position. But I've been putting it off because I knew getting that engine hoist out of the shed and into the garage was going to be a giant hassle. And by putting it off, it allowed me to finally realize I can just slide it into place using the 2x4s that are already under the mill. When I took the mill into the basement, I took it down in one piece and then used the engine hoist to install it on the new stand. But when I brought it back out of the basement this year, uh, I brought it out in pieces and I assembled it on the pan. So really all I needed to do was just slide it into place, tip it forward to get that last 2x4 out from under the column, and that was it. I didn't disturb the four aluminum pads that are under each corner of the mill, which was great because those are silicone down from the first installation. And then in the first box I checked in, and this is always how it is, I found the four bolts that hold the mill down to the stand, and I found the bolt, washers, and nuts that hold the mill onto the column. Now, you might remember from a couple of videos ago, I went and bought new hardware to install that head, but I went ahead and took that off and threw the old hardware back on, and uh, now I've got some spare metric hardware that will never get used. So to reuse these bolts for mounting the uh, mill base to the pan stand, I needed to clean off this old black RTV silicone and then using new blue RTV silicone and a uh, piece of round stock as a drift, I hammered these all into place. They're going through about two inches of plywood, which is why you just can't push them in by hand. It's a tight fit. And the blue RTV silicone in the position that I'm putting it just seals the bolt in the hole of where it's passing through those aluminum blocks. And this is what I had done in the past and it didn't leak a drop ever. So I'm pretty confident it's going to work this time as well. I remember thinking the motor was a lot harder to install than it was. I lifted it into place uh, fairly easily. I mean, it is a heavy motor. It weighs about 50 pounds. Once I got it into place, I just needed to rock it forward and back a little bit to get the bolts in and it held the motor mounts perfectly. It actually went together really quickly. Uh, I will be designing, well, I have been designing and I will be making new motor mounts that will also take the power draw bar when I get to that point. And I'll show you why that's also going to be important here in just a second. There you saw that I had about an inch to the top of my travel. And here you can see there's about a half inch until I hit the shelf directly above the mill. None of this was planned. Luckily, it worked out to be as close as it was. So right now I've lost maybe a half inch of Z height travel. Once I put on the new motor mounts, I'll get that back. I'm not super concerned about it at this point, but it will be nice to have the full Z capability, which I don't have right now. So here you can see the whole thing assembled. I'm really pleased it went together as quickly as it did. I also reinstalled the stepper motor splash guards. I can't find the one that covers the uh, table though. I need to figure out where that went. The next thing will be working on the electronics cabinet and I've been putting it off, but I'm gonna buckle down and try and attack that this week. And then after that, we'll get to tramming the column and we should pretty much be back up and running. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, post your comments and questions below if you have them. Any ideas are appreciated. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video.